I am one of the only people on the internet with any kind of a following that criticizes metal. Originally back in 2019, I did a response video to the punk rock NBA, which was my innovative responses to him. About three videos he did about black metal, slam death metal, and old school death metal that I have nothing against him, but a lot of his takes and viewpoints I felt like needed a second look and a second opinion on because they felt really misguided. And surprisingly, a lot of you guys agreed with me with that video. I have nothing against him. I have no vendetta against the punk rock NBA. And over the past year, a lot of you guys have been requesting me to do another response to him which I felt was unnecessary, as in I've stated everything I felt like that needed to be stated within the original video. But, <laughs> it seems as if now the punk rock NBA is getting a little bit infamous, it seems, with the rest of the YouTube music community, because now I'm seeing even more and more responses from other people towards the guy, and it seems like his takes on a lot of things haven't really improved all that much. Which is where we come to this video, which is a response to his latest video that he's done as he yet, called Trap Metal and the Future of Metal. Before we even jump into the video, the title alone has already got me scratching my head and making me roll my eyes. Not because of Trap Metal. That's not the problem here. It's not like I'm this incel metal fan that's just like, ugh, trap music and metal music can't go together, me angry, as the punk rock NBA probably thinks every metal fan comes off like when they see that. That's not the problem. If anything, I think it's kind of cool that metal is just that expansive with its sound that you can blend two different worlds together with it, like trap music, and still make a cohesive sound that gets a fan base. That I find pretty interesting. The real problem is the next part on it that says, the future of metal. That phrase and that question never fails to make me roll my eyes over and over again because I've seen it countless times. It seems like anything, whether it's an artist or a niche little subgenre, gets any type of extra success compared to what we're normally accustomed to within the realms of metal people automatically jump the gun and go, future of metal, this is the future of metal, this is what's gonna be the next big thing. It happened with metalcore, it happened with deathcore, it happened when baby metal broke into the scene, it happened when poppy broke into the scene, it happened when ghost broke into the scene. It's like any freaking time something new gets a little bit big, they automatically assume it's the future of metal. And Time and time again, it's just like, when are you going to stop saying this already? To break it down really simply, because with all the publishers and websites asking what is the future of metal, making it seem like this, it's this giant convoluted question, it's really simple. The future of metal is simply, it's always going to be a thing. Because let's use Judas Priest as a template for this, okay? They've been around since the 70s. That's 50 years they've been active. Basically two generations they've been making music. That's 50 years of influence on countless artists out there. The reason why metal will always have a future is the fan base is just so goddamn diehard for it. It's one of the most reliable sounding genres out there. Imagine for 50 years you have the sound of traditional heavy metal still being carried over still as solid as when it started out. That's the reason why metal's always going to have a future, is it's just so reliable, and it will always have the diehard fan base for generations to come. It's really that simple. But I get it, though, because in their point of view, the statement is the future of metal is what's going to be the next big thing that's going to help propel metal into the mainstream again. And to be honest, you know, this is coming from me, someone who listens to metal quite a lot, uh, I don't really think it can. Because there's always these questions about how come bands like Cannibal Corpse and Emperor and Morbid Angel that have sold hundreds of thousands of copies, how come they've done it and all these new artists can't do that with an extreme metal? Because uh, think about it, look at the times we're in right now. Back then, there wasn't, you know, 
internet accessibility. It's basically, you know, the big names are what you basically heard back then. So you kind of bottleneck everyone into just checking out these specific artists back in the, you know, late 80s and early 90s. Now, we have the internet. Thanks to the internet, there are endless amounts of artists to choose from out there. It's made it so accessible to discover all this underground hidden gems within just extreme metal alone from Bandcamp and Spotify and YouTube and any other streaming services out there. It's it, it's kind of pulverizing to some degree and, be kind, and it kind of becomes overwhelming as well. Like, how are you expecting all these metal fans that choose from all these different artists, these endless amounts too, to all basically gather up and put all their time and focus into just a few specific ones to help propel them into the mainstream. I just can't see that happening when there's just so many other options out there that literally, and I'm not making this up, it's like on a weekly basis, I'm discovering like five new artists, like averagely, it's just fucking nuts. So, personally, I really can't see any style of metal from new or old being propelled into the mainstream nowadays when there's just endless possibilities to choose from. From, again, just extreme metal and metal alone. Anyways, after spending all that time just talking about the title of the video, let's actually go and dissect the video itself about trap metal. So. As usual, the video starts off like a lot of other punk rock NBA videos. You know, he does his research, his promotions towards his advertisers, you know, the usual stuff. But like always, within a couple of minutes into it, it kind of starts to go a little downhill. Because within the first five minutes, he talks about his enjoyment with trap metal. He thinks of it as it could be the next big thing. Cool, you like it, nothing wrong with that. It is pretty interesting, you know, blending these styles together, two different ends of the spectrum within music, metal and trap music. Definitely something very different. But see, what I dislike about one of his takes right from the get-go is he talks about like how he got tired with it and how it kind of resembles how he got tired with extreme metal. There were still tons of people doing trap metal, actually more than ever, but it all just kind of sounded the same to me. Because what is there really left to do once you've taken things to the extremes that people like Scarlord did? But how much of it can you really listen to? It's basically the same issue that I have with a lot of extreme metal. By design, there's really no melody in the music. And once the shock value of like, holy shit, I can't believe they did that, wears off, it gets kind of tiring. And once you've heard one song in the genre, you've kind of heard them all. Finn. Literally, you could have just said, hey guys, I just look at the surface of extreme metal. I haven't dived any more into it. I don't really know that much about it. And that could have been totally fine. But to just assume that all of it's just bland and the same, it's like, dude, again, you're just looking at everything you talk about at face value. And it's just like, <laughs> we would have so much more respect if you just straight up said, hey, I don't know much about it. And then went from there. All right, and to also state that since you got sick of trap music or trap metal in this case, you make it now seem as if everyone's getting sick of it because you did. Putting your own personal experience with trap metal is the same as everyone else's? What? But it isn't until we get towards the end of the video that all of his points, a lot of his statements just fall right apart. We'll start it off with the beginning of how he views the future of trap metal is the next big thing, which of course he always has to bring up the numbers with Spotify. For example, the band Loathe, they have 159,000 listeners on Spotify. Scarlord literally has 10 times as many listeners as they do. But careful everyone, don't want to talk down Spotify too much. And one of the guys that did a response video to uh, the punk rock NBA a while back, I believe it's Stevic McKay, he did a rebuttal um, video, and I'll have a link to, in the description to everyone who's done response videos to the punk rock NBA. But in that video, he states that the punk rock NBA blocked him on Instagram because of his remarks to Spotify. I was motivated to make this video because Finn McKenty, you know, blocked me on Instagram because I told him he comes off like a bit of a cunt, what a cunt! when um, he disses musicians raising issues about Spotify. <laughs> that is the most beta shit I've ever heard in my life. You are that upset because someone talked down on a streaming service? 
bro, you need help. But anyway, getting back on track, the reason why I bring up that he compares the numbers on Spotify to the metal bands, to the trap art, the trap metal artists, excuse me, is that he then states this about it. There are just no new metal bands putting up those kind of numbers. That's just a fact. And yet metal fans are oftentimes super dismissive of this stuff and talk about it like it's just some passing fad. I mean, if tens of millions of people are listening to this stuff, then there's definitely something here. And that kind of like dismissive, arrogant thinking is exactly the kind of attitude that's made metal less and less relevant every year. You do realize you're just expressing the fact that trap metal at this point is trending. I mean, for fuck's sake, dude, don't you remember that you have a whole series called What Killed the Genre? And every single video, no matter which one you click on, it's basically done the exact same way. That there is a new genre, people like it because it's new and refreshing, then it gains a following, then it peaks, and then it fizzles out. That's basically right now what's happening with trap metal. It's something new, people like it. It's gaining steam at the moment, like you just pointed out, and it probably will climax at some point with popularity, yes. But just like history shows itself time and time again with your whole series, it'll fizzle out. So when people, especially the metal fan base, are stating that, you know, it's just a trend at the moment and it might just fizzle out within the, you know, the coming years, uh, there's a lot of evidence from your own videos that kind of prove it. A few seconds later, within the same chapter of how big is trap metal, you know, discussing about how it's trending right now, this and that, he talks about that why aren't labels signing these artists, yet they sign such generic metal bands that only have 15,000 listeners. It's absolutely baffling to me that these labels keep signing random generic bands with 15,000 monthly listeners on Spotify when there's clearly a huge demand for trap metal. But on the other hand, I get it because they are in the business of giving their customers what they want. And for the most part, metal fans hate this stuff and want nothing to do with it. His statement right there leaves me so dazed and confused because you have like these two conflicting arguments that you're not taking a stance on either one of them. You're stating that why aren't labels signing metal bands with only 15,000 followers? Why are they doing that and not signing, you know, trap metal artists that have substantially more followers? Yet then immediately right after you're like, hey, but I get it though, because, you know, this is not what the fans want and metal fans don't like this. Like, wh what was the point of that? You, you literally just corrected yourself. Could you just not have, like, edited that out and just realized that whole statement was just two arguments with no stance to it? That, like, that's, like, the only thing I'm getting out of that is you're making fun of metal bands because they aren't as big as trap metal. Like, I, I re again, like, I'm so confused right there. That's essentially the same thing as punching me in the face and then being like, hey man, sorry, I bet that hurt. It's all cool now because I apologized. It's like, I totally get it. You're probably in pain because I just broke your nose. Like, seriously, Finn, I, I don't understand what any of that was trying to prove there. Now we get to the final chapter within his video about why don't metal fans accept it. This is where things go from bad to way worse. Like usual, Finn wants to be a little superhero right now and act like all metal fans are these dim-witted dipshits because within this part, he states that one of the reasons why metal fans don't like trap metal is because it doesn't use real instruments. Stuff like this comment. Metal music is made with musical instruments. Like the idea that because there isn't a band, this can't be metal. Which, first of all, is not even an accurate criticism. For one, there's tons of guitars in trap metal. So you can tell that the people saying this stuff have literally never even listened to it before passing judgment. Very typical of metal fans. Metal fans need to get over their weird obsession with quote-unquote real drums. Which is also very ironic to me considering that the drums in almost all modern metal are fake as fuck. They're either completely programmed or they've been edited and sample replaced to the point where they might as well have just programmed them. Yeah, Finn, again, you're looking at everything at the surface level. You think every single metal band out there programmed, overproduced, not real? It's like, bro... Do, do you do like any more than just five minutes of research on a Wikipedia page or like what's trending on YouTube to realize just how wrong you are? Like seriously, my dude, 
spend like a couple of minutes just checking out stuff that isn't mainstream or something that you find automatically when you search it up on a search engine just like literally five fucking minutes my guy because you're literally saying that every metal band nowadays is not real either like dude again like i said earlier in this video all you have to say is hey guys i'm only looking at stuff at the surface level I don't know what I'm talking about, and you would probably get 10 times more respect than that statement. And his next statement, <laughs> he says that he wants to address the elephant in the room with trap metal as to why metal fans don't like it. What could the elephant in the room be about trap metal? You're probably thinking, oh, it's because it's really obvious, you know, it's metal and trap music. Those are two different styles from two different worlds. That's quite the oddball to throw at a fan base, right? Nope. Let's also address the elephant in the room, racism, and the role that plays in how resistant the metal scene has been to accept trap metal. There's way, way more black and Hispanic people in trap metal than pretty much any other branch of heavy music, which I think is a very good thing because it brings in some much needed diversity into the genre and therefore opens it up to a much larger potential audience that before probably had a hard time seeing themselves in metal. But I'm not so sure that it's a good thing in the eyes of a lot of metal fans who, let's be real, can be kind of racist. And to be clear, I haven't seen anybody explicitly say like, I'm not gonna listen to this because there's black people in the video. But I do think that the unconscious bias is there for sure. Let's just say it, they don't think black people can be metal. Finn, Finn, Finn. Dude, like I'm really... Where, where do I even begin with this? You straight up say that you haven't seen any comments of people outright saying that they won't listen to it because it has black people doing this style of music. You straight up say it, but then you say, well, it's obvious like there's an unconscious bias going on there. That, that's, that's, that's your proof, is that you're going off of an unconscious bias with no, like that. Finn, my guy, come on, dude. This is like a new low even for you. What you're basically saying right now to me and everyone else, but we'll just put it to me right now. If I were to say right now in front of this camera, unironically, guys, trap metal sucks. Your first instinct, Finn, is that, well, clearly why it's racist. I, I can't believe we're going into this discussion with a dude who is old enough to be my dad. Opinions. People might not like this because it's different from what they're used to and everyone is entitled to their opinion. What I truly do not understand about this is that you make it seem like metal fans are just racist, there's blatant racism going on in metal, but then you're like, come on guys, we need to get like this scene going, we need diversity in it. Why would you want that when you're making it sound like the metal scene is full of racists? Why would you want to push trap metal within the masses of metal fans. Like, I, I, you, you make no fucking sense. And then this statement. And I think they're gonna succeed whether the metal fans come along or not. If metal fans open their mind and start accepting it, great, that's awesome. And I hope they do. But if they don't, you know what? That's fine too. There's way too much momentum here behind these artists to stop it. There's a real community here that believes in this stuff. And they don't need the approval of a bunch of dusty metal gatekeepers. And again, you confuse me and a lot of other people so much as to what is your stance on this. Throughout the whole video, basically, you're telling us that trap metal is the next big thing for metal and that, you know, will metal fans enjoy it and that will be the thing that will help propel it to the mainstream and break out even more. But then you're like, well, you know what, guys? It's getting all this traction. It doesn't need the metal fans to be big. So it's like, what's your stance on this? Is it its own little thing? that trap metal is that'll be fine on its own? Does it need the metal fans to be bigger? It's like, Finn, you're, you're not being, you're not really making any points here. It's like one minute, again, you're stating that trap metal 
It'll be big, we just need the metal fans. Fuck you guys, we don't need you dusty gatekeepers. <laughs> like, take a stance on something, alright? Because how I look at it with trap metal, just being, like, really blunt with it, clearly it has a fan base. Clearly it'll still be a thing. But it, that's all it's going to be. It's just another branch off, another sub-genre take on metal itself. That's really all it is. And you're acting as if, like everyone else, that it's the future of metal. And it's like, a lot of your points, you know, I'm, I'm trying to be as professional, and I know I'm coming off a bit more aggressive in this one than I did in my previous response to you back in 2019, but seriously, y you need to kind of work on your stances when it comes to this stuff, because it's like, you contradict yourself so much. For my closing remarks to this video, I'm going to make this clear one more time because I know there are going to be people in the comments that are just going to be so stupid about it. I have nothing against the punk rock NBA. I don't have some vendetta against him. I'm not trying to destroy his channel. I'm not, like, butthurt because, ooh, he talks down on metal. I mean, for fuck's sakes, people. I joke around about it all the time on this channel. It's the fact of the matter is, in the beginning of the video, I showed a clip of him where he states that he's the only big YouTuber here on YouTube critiquing metal. Sure, you do have a big fan base, or a big following for that matter, and you do critique metal a lot, I get that, but you do realize every time you do this, it's equivalent to, like, you know, kicking the hornet's nest, and then you become so amazed and surprised and shocked that the metal fans come back at you and critique you. Like, it's fair game, my dude, okay? You can critique metal as much as you want, but we'll be coming and critiquing you right back. Like, it's not just, you know, you get the, the first say and the final say and that's it. And that's how I view my responses to him, all right? There's a lot to critique about your stances. And I think I made some valid points here. Now, if you want to be this butthurt fan that doesn't want to hear anything about it, go right ahead. But I'm letting you guys all know right now, because I reviewed everything I said, I stand by every fucking syllable I said in this video. As for Finn, again, I have nothing against you. I wish you the best. Clearly, you're having lots of success with YouTube. And, uh, yeah, best of luck to you. Just, you know, again, you kind of stored... The hornet's nest uh, with some of your videos. But that's it for this video, guys. Really curious to know what you think of all of this. And yeah, that's that. So like always, guys, make sure you guys drink plenty of water to stay hydrated and have a great day.